We are starting in chapter one, which covers integers. We are working out of the red book on Big Ideas Math. Once again, the book is available online at BigIdeasMath.com. What we're going to do in chapter one is we're going to actually go through all five sections in chapter one and review them and go over our key concepts. Because tomorrow in class, I'm going to give you some harder problems based on some of the content that you guys did last year. In section 1.1, we're going to talk about integers and absolute value. You should remember that integers are numbers such as negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. They are whole numbers and they're opposites. The other vocab word in section 1.1 talks about absolute value, which you've also done before. But just as a reminder, the absolute value of an integer is the distance between the number and 0 on a number line. The absolute value of a number a is written as the absolute value is a. So you would read this as the absolute value of a. Now I have drawn a number line here. And what we are going to do is actually figure out what the absolute value of negative 4 is and the absolute value of 4. Now the absolute value of negative 4 means if this is negative 4, that means, what is the distance from there to 0? Well, the distance from negative 4 to 0 is 4 units. Therefore, the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. And if we represent the absolute value 4 with a blue dot, this is also 4 units away from 0. So this is also 4 units which means the absolute value of 4 is also 4. Notice that the absolute value of any number, whether it's negative or positive, would be a positive integer. Example number 1. Order the values from least to greatest. Now in number 1, we have the absolute value of negative 34, 21, negative 17, the absolute value of 20, and the absolute value of negative 11. Well, the absolute value represents distance from 0. So we know that the absolute value of negative 34 is positive 34. The absolute value of 20 is 20. And the absolute value of negative 11 is 11. So if we ordered these from least to greatest, the smallest number would be negative 17. The next smallest number would be 11. But that would be the absolute value of negative 11. The next smallest number would be 20, which is the absolute value of 20. Then our next number would be 21. And our largest number would be the absolute value of negative 34. So this would be all five numbers ordered from least to greatest. The next two sections in chapter 1 are 1 1.2 and 1.3, adding and subtracting integers. So let's review our key concepts. Here's your key concepts. If the integers have the same sign, add the numbers and keep the sign. If the integers have different signs, subtract the numbers and take the sign of the bigger absolute value of the number. So let me write down an example. So let's do the first five examples. Number one, we want to simplify negative 4 minus 3. Now, negative 4 minus 3. This is a negative 4. And this is a negative 3. I know we said minus, but it's still a negative. So if I'm looking at this as just two separate numbers, I see that I have a negative 4 and a negative 3. They're the same sign. So I'm going to add them and keep the sign. That would be negative 7. Negative 2 plus 9. Those are different signs. Negative 2 and 9, that's a positive. So I subtract them. So I take 9 minus 2 and get 7. Since 9 is bigger, it's a positive 7. 7 minus 10. 7 is positive. 10 is negative. I have different signs. I subtract them. 10 minus 7. Well, 10 minus 7 is 3. But do you have more positives or negatives? We have more negatives. So therefore, this is negative 3. 8.3 minus 9.4. Since 8.3 is positive, and 9.4 is negative. They're different signs. Therefore, I subtract them. 9.4 minus 8.3 would be 
one and one tenth? And do you have more negatives or more positives? Well, you have more negatives. The absolute value of negative 9.4 is bigger than the absolute value of 8.3. So I take the negative. And lastly, negative and a negative, negative 2 and 1 tenth, minus 5 and, one, or five and 3 tenths. They're the same sign. I add them, so that gives me 7.4 or 7 and 4 tenths. I keep the sign, so my answer is negative 7 and 4 tenths. Example number six, negative three minus a negative 17 plus 13 minus nine minus two plus one. You could go left or right and do this in about four or five steps, but I'm gonna show you how you can do it pretty much in two steps. The first thing we gotta look at is what are our numbers? What do they mean? So three, that's negative. Then we have a minus and a negative. You should have learned that a minus and a negative, that's a positive. So really, that's a positive 17. Then I have a positive 13, a negative 9, a negative 2, and a positive 1. So my positive numbers, 17 and 13, and 1. My negative numbers are negative 3, negative 9, and negative 2. So I'm going to add together either the positives or negatives. So let's add together the negatives. So negative 3 and negative 9 would be negative 12, and negative 2 would be negative 14. So if you added together 3, 9, and 2, that's 14. So since they're all negative, you keep the sign. It'd be negative 14. Now we add the positives. 17 plus 13 plus 1. Well, 17 plus 13, that's 30, plus 1 is 31. And the last step is since these are different signs, we subtract them. 31 minus 14 gives me an answer of 17. Because I have more positives, my answer is positive 17. In section 1.4 and 1.5, you're going to be multiplying and dividing integers. So let's go over those key ideas. The product or quotient, remember product is the answer to a multiplication problem, and the quotient is the answer to a division problem. The product or quotient of two integers with the same sign is positive, and the product or quotient of two integers with different signs is negative. So example number seven. Negative five times negative six. Well, they're the same sign, therefore their answer is positive 30. The next one is 7 times negative 3 times negative 4. So we can take 7 times negative 3 first, or you could take negative 3 times negative 4. The order of multiplication does not matter. So I'm going to take 7 times negative 3, that gives me negative 21, times negative 4, same sign, so that's going to give me positive 84. Now negative 5 squared, now this is where you're going to be Confused if you're going to be confused. 9 and 10, the answers are not the same. And number 9, you are taking negative 5 squared, which means you are taking negative 5 times negative 5. They're the same signs, so your answer is positive 25. In number 10, though, you are only squaring the 5, not the negative. The negative is not in parentheses. So this looks like this, negative times... 5 times 5. That's what this looks like, because the 5 is the only thing that's being squared, not the negative. So 5 times 5 is 25, so your answer here is positive, I'm sorry, negative 25. So make note, if the negative is inside parentheses, you take it to the power, just like in number 9. In number 10, the negative is not in parentheses, so you do not take it to the power. Here is a real application using integers. Example number 11. Now this one is on page 31 online on your textbook. So if you don't want to copy down the problem, you can just put page 31. But you still need to write down the actual work that we're going to do. So it says you measure the height of the tide using support beams of a pier. Your measurements are shown in the picture. What is the mean hourly change in the height? So you'll notice that 
I've written here since it's kind of hard to see in the picture, but the tide is 8 inches right here at 8 p.m. And at 2 p.m., it's at 59 inches, which is much higher. So we have to figure out how do you determine what the mean hourly change in height is? Well, the first thing you do is figure out what's the final height and what's the initial height. So mean is the average, so we have to figure out the average between them. So we know that at 8 p.m., it's at 8 inches. At 2 p.m., it starts at 59 inches. So here we go. 8 minus 59. At 2 p.m., it's 59 inches. At 8, it's, it's at uh, 8 inches. So it drops. It drops how much? It drops 51 inches. But how much time has elapsed from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m.? From 2 p.m. to 8 p.m., that's six hours. So over six hours, the tide has dropped 51 inches. That's why it's negative 51. So to get the average or the mean hourly change, this is how much it changes in six hours. We want to know how much it changes per hour. So you divide, negative 51 divided by 6. Well, these are different signs, so our answer is going to be negative. So our change is going to be negative 8.5 or negative 8.5, but we need to make sure we put that in a sentence or make sense of it. The mean change in the height of the tide is negative 8.5 inches per hour. And that would be our final answer.